Good morning. I thought for the next few videos, presentations, I would do a little bit about uh, my history and my past, past and my background. Um, many of you have found the channel and found what I have to say and teach interesting. But I think that uh, it would be good for me to do a little presentation on this side of myself so that you get to know me and understand where I come from. You know, when we're young and we come to a fork in the road, we really don't know which direction that fork would take. And uh, being young, you can't really look forward and predict the future. But one of the advantages of being old and elder is that you can really look back and see that path that you've taken and the many forks and how they all led to this one point in your present. And so knowing that, um, knowing a little bit about my past history might uh, help you to better understand me. So for this video presentation, I'm going to do a little bit about my just my background when I was very young and how I got into being more athletic. Um, in the next uh, video presentation, I'll uh, talk about how I finally got to meet Master Golden Ying and became a student of his. And then I think uh, another video I'll do about how I came to ask people how I could teach and um, about my teaching experience in classes. I'm the second son of uh, the family. Um, my name is Fung. Uh, in English, you pronounce it Fung, but in Cantonese, you pronounce it Fung. My family came from Guangdong province, as many of the people in San Francisco uh, did. Um, we are uh, Cantonese. I'm, I am third generation on my father's side. On, fourth generation on my mother's side. So we came in the 1900s, uh, Chinese American. Growing up, um, we were, uh, had to go to Chinese school after English school. So that meant that we really went to, went to school from about nine o'clock to three o'clock, then had an hour break, and then we had to go to Chinese school from four o'clock to six o'clock. And that happened all the way through the sixth grade. It was kind of part of the church activities. Then we lived in a, a large Chinese community in San Mateo, the south of San Francisco. I was born in San Francisco in 1946. When I was young, I really was kind of one of the smaller kids in my uh, class. Uh, I, I wasn't very athletic. I couldn't do, I was too small to play football. I was not tall enough to play basketball. I wasn't very good at baseball. And those are the three main sports we were kind of familiar with when we were growing up. In uh, Chinese school, we did um, have uh, one teacher who uh, did Kung Fu. And that, I remember that year, he tried to organize us to do a Chinese opera. And he taught us what he called Chinese shadow boxing. But um, I really didn't know what that was about. And that was my first encounter with anything that was uh, martial arts. Not being very athletic, I didn't really kind of think of myself as uh, kind of an athlete or anything. I didn't really think about my physical presence. Um, but during 1959 and 1960, they had the President's Council on Physical Fitness. That was Eisenhower and John F. Kennedy. And during that was, I would have been um, in seventh and eighth grade during middle school. And in seventh grade, they came around and they had testing on all the kids on what they could do and basically the testing was pull up push up sit up and 50 yard dash and so um i never done a sit up before i wasn't any good at pull up stand i couldn't even do a pull up and i didn't couldn't do any push ups that you know more than a few 
So when it came time to do the testing, they had me sit down and somebody held my skinny little legs and they said, just show me how to do a sit-up. And I started doing sit-ups. And about um, 60, I kind of said, should I keep going? And they said, yeah, I'll keep going, you know. So I think I did 104. And it just kind of blew everybody's mind. I mean, it's like a skinny little kid. I probably weighed less than 80 pounds, but I didn't know I had that strength in me. And um, I won the school record, and I held the school record for the next year. And so that was actually the beginning where I found that I had a physicality, ability to um, you know, pursue my physical aspects. So I did. Also around that time, I discovered some books in my father's collection and down in and out in the garage. And these were Joe Weider books, uh, uh, Charles Atlas. My father had been into physiculture a little bit, and he had a set of kind of iron dumbbells. And so I started lifting weights. Since I was 13, and I would go to the market and buy the physical fitness books, uh, fitness, I think it was uh, muscle fitness. And I started learning how to um, lift weights on my own. In fact, we were so poor, I had to go pour a set of dumbbells out of coffee can and concrete and uh, iron pipe, and that was my barbell. And at the same time, it was Jack Lane. So by the summer of 13, I actually started to develop some little tiny muscles, and I was pretty happy about it. There's a photograph of me on the beach in Canada to show you off my new physical body. And um, that was the first time that I realized that there was such a thing as individual sports. So when I got to high school, I found out that there was uh, wrestling, and, uh, wrestling being an individual sport. And so I decided to go on a trial for wrestling. I didn't know anything about wrestling. So um, in our first uh, primary season match, they had a blind school come and they um, paired me up with a, another blind school contestant. And I thought, oh, this is not fair. You know, the guy can't see. He's going to be a you know, cakewalk. Well, he pinned me in about 30 seconds. And that was like my first humble pie to realize that somebody that was blind had more sense, a feeling of their senses than somebody that actually had visual. And that was kind of an eye opener. And I vowed that um, I was going to get good at the sport. Now, I don't remember in my freshman year, I didn't do that good. But in my sophomore year, I actually became, was undefeated. But at the end for the um, uh, league championship, I let my older brother, uh, not, not my brother, but older friend, um, take my place in that weight category so that he could um, compete. Um, junior year, I did pretty good. I started to get a reputation in the league. I went into the senior year in the league uh, um, wrestling matches at one school, Aragon High School. Um, there was a kid, his name was Butcher. Butcher, and he had won the state championship from the year before. And my coach, who was the woodshop teacher who convinced me to try out for wrestling, asked me, just please don't get pinned because in high school wrestling, you know, it's not only your match that counts, but it counts towards whether the school wins, how many, you get so many points for uh, um, winning by points, you get so many points for winning by takedown and pinning and you get so many uh, points and they just told me just don't get pinned because we need the points well ended up in that match i beat the previous year state champion by points that kind of like was a shock i didn't expect it but i didn't know it was that good but um so i beat him and then the next time we met in the league uh, matches he beat me and when it finally came down to the league championships, we worked our way through the ladder. We were each on different sides of the ladder. And we uh, had a match in the very finals to see who would win the league championship. And he went and told my parents that he was going to 
beat me and I got my father mad. My father being kind of a strong man, he never kind of came to any of my matches, my wrestling matches or anything like that. You know, when I was wrestling, I could hear my father say, kill him, Randy, kill him, you know. <laughs> and uh, so the the match was kind of epic in that uh, we kind of battled each other and I finally like uh, kind of got ahead in points and was able to ride him to the uh, finish and I won the league championship beating the previous year state champion. So um, that was a pretty high moment for me. Um, and as well, I went out for gymnastics. And in gymnastics, I learned um, the, that I had a certain amount of propensity towards uh, enjoying the training in, after school. That became, that was kind of the beginning of my understanding of the discipline, looking forward to that moment after school when I could go out and do my stretching and do my calisthenics and training. Like I went out for the rings. And um, I went out for uh, the high bar and for exercise. It wasn't really that good, but I really enjoyed gymnastics. So um, in doing the high bar, I was doing the giant swings one day, and I had kind of a terrible accident in doing the four giant swing at the rear part of the swing. My hands came off the bar, and I had a spotter on the mat but I flew over his head and landed on the gym floor on my neck. And luckily I was uh, very flexible because I was able to um, survive that accident. I was bent over backwards and the coach came over and picked me up. I ended up in the ambulance going into the hospital and almost broke my neck. But because of my flexibility, um, I survived that accident. And to this day, I have a Buddha day that's slightly bent in my neck. So if you uh, watch my posture, I tend to have a little bit of a forward stance in my neck, and that's the reason why. One of the things I learned in my wrestling was um, a principle in Tai Chi, and that is uh, yielding. Um, in wrestling, you have these uh, specific movements that are based on leverage, a sit out, a switch, and um, you're on top and the opponent comes over your arm and goes underneath your body and uses that leverage to gain um, the leverage, leverage to uh, get back on top. Or on a sit out, you shoot out and you kind of sit back on the guy's arm and um, you can, by the leverage, you can kind of use that against your opponent. I found this technique that um, nobody really ever knew or never taught. And it was at the moment that the opponent was applying that leverage to all of a sudden let go, relax, and then they couldn't gain that leverage on you. So the guy would do the sit out or the switch, and as he was doing the switch, I would just release my grip because it's based on like a uh, monkey reflex where you're holding on tight and then as you does the switch you kind of can gain that leverage on you. So I, re I found out that if you just kind of let go at that moment as you spin in your thing then you can kind of push him back down and get a pin. Or if it doesn't sit out, same thing, you can let him sit out and then slam him down and then gain leverage for doing a pin. And so that was really the first time I learned a basic principle of Tai Chi. I didn't know it was Tai Chi but um, now looking back I realized that it was, and they used to call me the rubber man because nobody could gain that leverage on me. So those were the two sports that I did in high school. At the end of the graduating in 1964, when they held the assembly, they would give awards uh, for various activities. And uh, one of the most prestigious awards was the Jerry Sullivan Award um, handed to Outstanding uh, Athlete Sportsman of the Year. And of course, it always went to somebody like a football jock or somebody in the basketball team or somebody like that. So I remember sitting in the assembly and they said they were granting the 
Curie Celebrator Award for the Outstanding Sportsman of the Year. And they called my name, Randy Farmer. I went, huh? I didn't have any expectation of uh, even coming close to getting something like that. But apparently my coach, Hanson, had gone with the other coaches and recommended me. And um, I won the most prestigious athletic award for the graduating class of San Mateo High School, Jerry Sullivan Award. And my name is still in a trophy in the hall in San Mateo. So that was my high school experience at uh, being an athlete. But uh, around the same time, my brother decided that he was going to start studying in Temple. And so my brother and I would drive to South San Francisco. And um, we started studying with uh, Temple Karate with uh, Harry Hutchins. Harry Hutchins had um, gotten the studio from the Tracy brothers. Uh, who were students of uh, Ed Parker, so and Harry Hutchins, Harry Hutchins was teaching in um, right by the city college. So my brother and I started studying Temple Karate. I didn't know anything about the Temple Karate, but in Temple Karate they teach a lot of self-defense and they teach you all the basic kicks and striking, and um, they basically have a lot of sparring. Uh, they call it kumite. And so they really didn't get that far, got into maybe like the purple belt going into starting to get green belt, and then we kind of dropped out. But actually, I had a lot of uh, experience uh, in sparring from uh, those days. And uh, of course, I thought it was a pretty hot shot. And those days, I was kind of a punky kind of kid, and I started to. Uh, get into uh, fights and challenging people. So I think uh, that wasn't a good uh, part of my personality that uh, started to be developed. Um, so that was my basically my background before I met uh, Master Gordon Yun. Um, I already had like uh, developed a sense of practice with the, the weightlifting. Um, I was pretty avid on uh, pursuing that for uh, during that time period, having been a skinny kid, and then uh, finally de developing some sort of um, athletic uh, ability. And the wrestling taught me about grappling, and the temple uh, karate taught me lots of striking and kicking um, uh, techniques. So that was um, my experience before leading up to when I met uh, Master Holding in. in the next video presentation, I'll talk about how I came to meet Master Golden Moon, one of the changing moments in my life.